As a UI designer, you'll most likely spend the majority of your time designing websites. But every now and then, something else might come along, like, for example, a smartphone app. So I think it's important that you flex those creativity muscles uh, by uh, working on uh, projects that are maybe outside of your comfort zone. And that's exactly what this course is all about. Because today we'll be designing this calculator app in Figma. Uh, we'll start with a simple wireframe and we'll create two pages for it. One for the calculator and one for the history. But hey, for just meeting, my name is Adi Bordilla. I'm a web designer and developer, and we're going to split this course the following way. Uh, first, we'll grab the wireframe and we'll change the typography and also we'll import some icons. Uh, then we'll create and apply a color scheme. And in this part, I'll uh, show you how to easily work with tints and shades. Uh, then we'll design the actual app layout and we'll follow it up with the creation of the history page. Uh, and finally, I'll tell you uh, more information about a challenge uh, that comes with this course. Now, before we get started, I would like to briefly tell you about an amazing resource that I use all the time, and that is called Envato Elements. Here you can find tons of useful resources like fonts, icons, uh, UI kits, WordPress themes, music, stock photos, and much more. For creatives like me, this is an awesome resource because all the assets have simple commercial licensing and you're not bound to any contract. Therefore, you can cancel whenever you want. So if you're interested, check out the link in the video description. All right, let's get the ball rolling and start working on the designs, uh, typography and iconography. Uh, before we get started, don't forget that uh, in the video description, you can find links to all the resources that I used in this video, as well as uh, links to the source files. So if you want to follow along, uh, that's where you can download the Figma file from and uh, work alongside me. Oh, and uh, don't forget to also uh, hit that subscribe button uh, for more free courses and tutorials just like this one. All right. Uh, the first thing we have to do for this project is to take care of the typography and icons. So let's see how we can do that. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at the Figma file here. This is the starter kit uh, that you can download. Uh, we, you have two pages here, basically. First page is uh, where we're going to start. We have the wireframe. And then uh, you can see here the final design that I made. Let's see exactly what we have for this calculator app before we get to the uh, to the typography part. So we basically have the the main uh, calculator pad here with all the numbers and all the uh, the buttons that we need to create the various operations. Uh, this is going to be a history uh, button that's going to basically show up the history with all of our calculations. This is a clear button that uh, basically deletes the the current row. And here we have the calculation area where we can see the uh, the operations and the result for those um, operations, right? And that's pretty much it really. Now, this uh, demo is also using uh, an iPhone 14 template. This is from the Figma community. You can find the exact link by clicking on uh, on this link in uh, in Figma. So let's go ahead and uh, actually uh, delete this. Or actually, you know what? Let's let's copy this. Let's create a new page here, and we'll uh, we'll just start fresh. So we'll uh, duplicate this uh, this wireframe, and as you can see. The majority of text content uh, in here is uh, going to be numbers, right? And in order to create a clean interface, we need to, uh, or we need those numbers to have like a fixed width or a consistent width. For that, really easily, we can use a mono spaced font. And the one that uh, we're going to use is called JetBrains Mono. This is a free 
typeface is a typeface developed or created for developers and you can download it at this address here you just download install the font in your system and you'll be good to go so uh, what we're going to do now is basically select every single piece of text uh, that we have here and we're going to change uh, it's uh, font family to JetBrains Mono. And we're going to do the same here. Let's see this and this. All of these, basically, all the numbers. Yeah, these will all use JetBrains Mono. Uh, and we're going to keep them at 20 pixels for, uh, for our design. Let's just make sure that we set the... Uh, line height to 150 percent here in figma and actually let's do the same here uh, we're going to change the line height to 150 percent okay so that's looking a lot better already and just to make it easier for ourselves in the long run uh, let's actually select uh, like the numbers here and we'll create a text style with this. We'll call it uh, number, right? So the number is 20 pixels, 150% line height, and it's using JetBrains Mono. And let's do the same for these. We'll just um, apply the, uh, the new style we created. This way, if we decide to change uh, the style at any point, we can just change this text style and it's going to be applied uh, to everything else. Uh, we also need these two uh, to use the number style because the others, the percentage, the uh, divide times and all the other um, operations will be represented by actual icons and not uh, just text. Also, the zero and a dot here must also use the number style. Uh, also, let's uh, select these. And these are 20 pixels, 150. Let's add a num or uh, a style to these as well. But actually, what I want to do is have these appear a little bit smaller than these. So let's actually change the number text style to use 28 pixels instead of 20 just like that and I'm gonna have these as let's call it number small right so that's gonna be applied to these let's see do we make these bigger or smaller I don't know yet for now we'll just leave them like that and that should do it uh, really for the typography. Now, let's see about the icons, because we need quite a few in here. We need icons for the history, clear, the delete here, uh, for the percent and all the other operations, and also for this uh, plus and minus. So well, we're gonna grab our icons from Font Awesome because it's free and uh, we can use it in both personal and commercial projects and font awesome is like a huge library of icons so uh, we can pretty much find everything we need so uh, let's start with the uh, operations really let's say which was the first one here uh, let's start with the percentage so percent and for this we're gonna search for the free icons and there it is. So just uh, open this. You can simply uh, download it from here. I can just drag this from my downloads folder in here. And uh, in Figma, since uh, this has a, a different width than the height, I'm just going to click this uh, Constraint Proportions button. And I'm going to make this 24 pixels. So now we have this, uh, this nice icon. Now, what I'm going to do here is actually create uh, a separate frame uh, that's going to be called components because 
Uh, we're gonna turn these icons into uh, a, a couple of components. It's gonna make it easier for us to work with. So uh, what I can do here is uh, actually rename this to icon slash uh, percent. We'll do a bit of organization here. And with it selected, we can just click create component. All right. And one thing that I want is for all of these icons to be the exact same size. Uh, in my case, this is uh, 18 by 24. So we need to make it a little bit wider. But if we just drag it like this, uh, it's going to make the uh, uh, the vector itself stretch because it's that's how it's set here. It's set to scale. So let's change that to left top. And then um, I'm just going to select the uh, the parent here. Uh, resize this to 24 by 24. And with this, just align it inside uh, or align it to the center of its uh, its parent there. So uh, that's our first icon. That's uh, for the components. And what I'm going to do now is just fast forward because it's simply a matter of um, uh, grabbing the rest of the icons based on our design. And all you have to do is search Font Awesome for the other icons like divide times uh, minus plus equal and plus minus. Okay, so you do the exact same thing. You search, you download, you import them into Figma, and you create a component. And I did exactly that. I grabbed all of these icons from uh, Font Awesome. I made sure that all of them are 24 by 24. I uh, also resized them where needed, like for example, um, on this uh, percentage and on this one, so that the icon itself is right in the middle of this 24 by 24 uh, pixel container. So uh, what, I, what we can do now is simply select all of these, all of these and select create multiple components. Right, so now uh, in our uh, page, if we go to resources, you can see that under local components, we have icon and then all of these. It's really that simple. Now, finally, for uh, this step of the process, we need to create yet another component that's going to be used for the actual buttons in the calculator, right? So uh, we'll actually do this, we'll actually do two components. One will be a component for the numbers and one will be a component for the icons. Okay, so what exactly do I mean by that? Well, here's what we'll do. We'll select this text. We'll do Shift A to create an auto layout frame. We'll uh, set the width and height to fixed. We'll use 64 by 64. Let's do like a simple fill color. It doesn't really matter what color we'll use. Uh, let's round off the corners and Let's make sure everything is nicely aligned to the center. So now let's select that and we'll rename this to number key and create a component. Uh, let's duplicate that. Let's detach the instance. Let's rename this to icon key. Okay. So this will have a number or sorry, an icon instead of the number, but it's exactly the same size. The icon is aligned to the middle like that. And we create a component out of this as well. And those are all the components that we're going to need for our design. We have all the icons and then we have the icon key. And since we're at it, let's create uh, some, uh, some properties. Let's select this uh, this text here, and let's create a text property. Let's call it number. Or actually, text is fine. And here we'll select an uh, an instance swap property. We'll call it icon. And if you don't know what these mean, we have a detailed uh, class or course on Figma on the Envato Test Plus YouTube channel that you can check out and learn more about uh, working with Figma components. All right, so in this lesson, we took care of the typography for 
our uh, calculator app design. And we also loaded uh, a bunch of icons and we created all the necessary components. Right, we're off to a good start, so let's keep up the momentum. Uh, the next step in our small uh, design project here is to figure out the colors that we're gonna use. So let's do that next. Now, creating a color scheme for a project can be a pretty daunting task, but there are tools that can help you do that uh, a lot easier. And one of the tools that I use uh, all the time uh, is called Adobe Color, and you can find it here at color.adobe.com. So uh, I use this to create color palettes based on different color harmony rules, like analog, triad, complementary, and so on. But I can also explore uh, certain colors created by other amazing people. So for example, if we uh, type in here calculator, right, we can find a couple of ideas and uh, we can grab some uh, some inspiration from these or if you want you can just uh, create one yourself starting from scratch in my case um i envisioned this calculator design to uh to have the pad here uh use a dark background something towards blue and then an accent color something with orange in it right and the blue color that I chose, and let me just create a simple shape here, uh, is this one, 1D2C40, right? It's a, uh, it's a pretty uh, darkish blue that looks uh, something like this. And then to nicely complement that, I used D95032. And this is a nice uh, orange color that looks something like this. It's a bit more towards red. Uh, but uh, I like it. It gives a really nice contrast uh, against this uh, this dark background. Now, I also want to use uh, a kind of a greenish color for certain elements. So what I did was I grabbed this color and I went to Adobe Color. I pasted this right here in the middle. And then I just played around with the color harmonies going through, you know, the complementary, the split complementary. And uh, the one that I found here, 32D99C, right? I just copied that. And that's the, the, the green color that uh, we're going to use. This is more towards turquoise, I guess. But it's going to do uh, really well for us. Also, we need two extra colors for this because Sure, this will be the background color for this entire pad area, but uh, we need the buttons to kind of uh, be distinguishable. So we need to use either a darker or a lighter version of this color. So for that, let's copy it. And we're going to generate some tints and shades. Now, there are a bunch of ways you can do that. Uh, this is one of the tools that I started using recently because I really like how it works. You can find it at this address right here. It's called Shadow Lord. Uh, from, uh, from what I can tell, it's made by Noel Delgado, I think. Uh, and it's basically a tints and shade generator tool. And what you do is you basically paste in uh, a hex code of your color and you know the number of increments and it gives you tints and shades starting from that color so everything on the left side are uh, tints so mixes of that color with white and everything to the right side are shades or mixes of that color with black in my case uh, i'm going to use a uh, 30 percent tint here or this one and that's going to be used for lighter text so let's add that to figma like so and then i'm also going to use a darker text this one the 30 percent shade yeah i'm going to use it for the button background so as you can see this is darker this is our starting color and this is a lighter and these are the four colors that we're going to use in our design. All right, so with the color scheme out of the way, 
let's go ahead and create the actual app layout that's coming next. And to do this, let's start from the very top. This is the frame that we're uh, going to be working on. And first of all, let's ungroup everything. And here's the way I'm going to design this. Uh, I'm going to have uh, the result of the operation on actually the same line because I want to uh, save up this, this vertical space as much as possible, right? Because I want to be able to display as many operations here before uh, the user uh, needs to, uh, to tap on the history button. So the way we do that uh, is actually the following. Uh, let's duplicate this. We're going to have 10. So I'm going to separate these 15 and then 25. I want the result uh, to be displayed in bold. So I need to create another uh, text style here. So we're going to use bold. And I'm going to call this number small bold. Okay, let's actually zoom in. And I'm going to use the green color. Like so. And for these, I'm going to be using the lighter color like this. Okay, so what I need to do now is to bring in some icons. Yeah, so we need a plus sign here. So let's grab that. Let's paste it in here. And we're going to use a lot of auto frame. So select all of these, shift A, and I'm going to add four pixels of distance between them, align everything horizontally. And I'm going to use the same color for the icon. Uh, but I'm actually going to uh, resize this icon to 12 pixels, so half that size. Easiest way, press K for scale or select it from here and select 0.5x from the drop down menu. Okay, uh, let's also duplicate this and we're going to choose an equal sign like so. But I want the distance between the actual, the first part of the operation and the result and the equal sign to be a bit bigger than what I have here. So select this, this, and this. Shift A to create another frame with auto layout. And I'm going to select the main frame and choose the spacing between to eight pixels, just like that. Now let's, uh, we can actually delete this. We can move this, uh, let's say about 18 pixels from uh, from the edge there. Okay, let's uh, see about the next operation. Let's actually duplicate this. So here we have 255, 22, and the result 56110. The operation here is multiply. So we're going to select uh, multiply from this drop down. Now let's actually select these. Shift A to create a frame with auto layout. Let's select, let's set the distance between them to 16 pixels. Let's align everything to the right side. This we can now delete and we'll bring this back 18 pixels from the right side. And let's place these 16 pixels from uh, this element here on the top. Okay, so let's assume that this here is the current operation. These are already completed, yes, because they have a result. And I want to create a way to separate these. Easiest one, use a line. So select the line tool or L, draw a line. It doesn't have to be precise. Command X or Control X to cut that, paste it inside the frame with auto layout. Uh, let's actually make this frame bigger. like so. And let's now select the um, uh, the line and make it fill the container. And for this line, let's uh, grab this color. Uh, let's paste that in. And actually, you know what, it's still a bit too dark for me, I would like a more subdued line. So 
Let's actually open our tool again and select this as the base color. And I'm gonna select the 90% tint as a fourth color here. I totally forgot about this one. Yeah. And let's see, we can use this. And now we have a nice smooth line going on through there. Cool. Next, let's see about the current operation, right? So what I'm gonna do is actually uh, duplicate this. So we have uh, seven and that's uh, divided by, and here we actually have uh, an operation, right? So we're gonna have three plus and then 10 and we close the parentheses and we grab this, we duplicate it and we change it to plus. And of course we don't have the, the result here and we can actually ungroup that frame. So now we can delete this. But since this is the current operation, I want these to be displayed uh, with a bigger font size, right? So I'm gonna select the text and I'm gonna change these to number and I'm gonna change the color to our base color and the icons actually will stay exactly the same, but uh, they will be using the slightly toned down color, just like that. Okay, so that's the top part done. Now, let's see about this bottom part. First thing, let's ungroup everything. Uh, let's see about these two buttons, right? We have the history and the clear. So the history is this, let's copy that, paste it in. And the clear is this, copy that. Uh, paste it in. So now we can delete this. And let's actually go ahead and select this. We'll do a shift A because I want to create a fixed width container, 64 by 64, uh, just so we match the other buttons that we're gonna add here. Align everything to the center like so. And 64 by 64 is actually a great uh, size for mobile because it gives uh, the user a, a really nice area for uh, for tapping, you know, with their finger. Uh, it should be on iOS, it should be at least 44 by 44. So 64 by 64 is uh, even better. So let's actually duplicate this, uh, put it here, and we'll actually just swap this like so, we can delete this. And now we can select both of these, Shift A to add another frame with auto layout. And I'm gonna set an auto uh, distance between them. So, uh, you know, I can uh, resize this to, uh, to whatever I want. And one item will be placed on the left, one on the right. And you know what, actually, let's, uh, let's increase the space between these and the edges of the screen here. Uh, from 18 to 32 pixels, because I think 18 is just a little too, uh, too little. So 32 by 32, like that. Let's also do it here and here, like so. Cool. For now, we'll just uh, leave this uh, kind of around here. Uh, we'll position it after we've completed um, the layout for the pad here. So for the pad, here's how we're gonna start. Uh, let's see, we have a, a group here with all of these items. So I think we should actually start from scratch. Let's keep this as a reference. And let's start by bringing in two copies of these components, all right? So let's create the first row. We have icon, uh, text, and then text, and then icon again, right? So let's shift A these. Let's make sure they're aligned to the middle and let's add uh, 16 pixels spacing between them. And let's make this row or let's place it 32 pixels from the edge and 32 like this. 
And actually, let's have every single icon in here fill the container with Ys. So I'm, we're going to keep the same 16 pixel distance between, and they're going to be 64 pixels in height, but the width is going to be variable, right? For this uh, first one, we're going to use the plus minus. For this, we're going to use a zero. This is going to be the dot. This is going to be the equal. Where is the equal? There it is. Cool. So that's our first row. Let's position it yeah, somewhere like this. That's fine. So uh, it just sits right up the, uh, the bottom element here. And then let's uh, duplicate it. We're going to add 16 pixels there. And here it's actually uh, a lot easier because we have the numbers. We have one, two, three, and then the plus sign. So now let's actually delete the ones that we already made. Let's repeat the process. Now let's select all of this. Shift A to add another frame with auto layout. Uh, let's grab this. And actually, you know what? Let's um, let's select this. And let's add a fill color. That's going to be our base gray here. Like so. Let's make it full width. Okay. Let's select this bottom component here. Actually, let's push this back, select the bottom component and choose white instead of black. Uh, okay, so now let's add 32 pixels of padding uh, to the sides and also 32 pixels on the top and bottom. So now I can just bring this over. And I can set it to be displayed as hug contents and I'll align it right at the bottom. And let's see, we actually need to set the uh, bottom one to 34. Just so it matches uh, the height of this element, which is 34 pixels. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. The layout here is pretty much complete. Uh, let's move this down. Let's set it at about 16 pixels from uh, this, uh, this edge here. And now the last thing we need to do is uh, implement the correct colors, right? So I'm going to do this first at component level. Uh, for the colors, I'm going to use the darker shade as the background. And for text, I'm going to use white. And let's do the same here. Yeah, as a fill, we're going to use that. And actually, when it comes to icons, yeah, we're going to use the uh, the orange for the icon color. And hmm, let's see why didn't this update? Weird. At uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can just select these individually and change the color like that, like so. Uh, this last one, the equal, uh, we're actually going to do a little swap here. We're going to use this for the background and the white as the foreground. And then for uh, some of the rest that are not uh, related to the actual operation, we're going to use the green. Okay, so select this. So I'm going to use the green here and here and here and also here. Uh, so instead of black, we're going to use that. Perfect. Uh, these, let's see, we need to make sure they are using the correct color. So we're going to change them like that. And now if we take a look at all the colors that we selected, uh, we can see that they're using the correct ones. Okay, great. And that's basically our app layout. By using um, auto layout and applying colors and typography, we basically went from this to this. 
it wasn't that hard, was it? So now the idea is the user types in, it does its calculations, and they're going to appear right here. Once you hit the equal sign, that operation along with its result will be added to this, uh, this history here. At any point, you can open up the history, and that's uh, what we're about to do next, or you can tap on this button to delete the current line or the current character, I should say. You can press AC to delete, to delete the current line. AC stands for all clear, and the rest of the stuff is just basically uh, how a calculator works. And with that, our design is almost complete. And I say almost because we still need to create the history page. So let's go ahead and do that next. The history page is really simple to make because it basically just needs to display the history or the past calculations, right? It doesn't need to display uh, the actual calculator pad. It just needs to show uh, the past calculations and a way to display the, um, uh, the calculator again, and also an option to uh, delete or clear that history. So uh, let's actually grab some of these, move them over, and let's create the history page here. Let's actually call this main, and let's call this history, like so. Okay, so let's see what we don't need. We don't need this bit. Uh, this is back to being uh, using black color. I'm going to move this all the way down because I want to make room for the actual history. Uh, we don't need the current calculation or the separator. And we need to change the icons here. So this uh, I'm going to change to uh, the calculator. And this I'm going to change to the trash. All right. So this is how we clear or delete the history. And this is how we uh, go back to showing the calculator, right? So it's pretty simple. Uh, you can actually create a prototype here if you want. We basically click this button and it takes us to this history page. This can slide down. It really depends on uh, how you want to create it. But in terms of the uh, design, this is what we have. So we went from this wireframe to this design that you see here by using some uh, simple uh, typography. We used the same typeface, which is JetBrains Mono. We defined some colors starting from a base color, and then we created some tints and shades for it. We used this accent color, this orange, and using Adobe Color, we found a matching um, secondary color, We could, I guess we could call it. And then using some simple layout techniques and Figma's amazing auto layout feature, we created this number pad and also the layout for these calculations that we see here. And finally, we created the history page where we used a Figma's instance swap feature on its components to change uh, the icons from these to these right here. And that's it, folks. Our calculator app design is now complete. And I guess now it's your turn because we have a challenge for you. So let me tell you more about that. This course comes with a UI design challenge, and it goes something like this. Download the Figma Starter Kit, and based on the wireframe, design your own calculator app. Then send us the end result. Now, you'll find a link to the Starter Kit in the video description. So go ahead and download that. Uh, it's a Figma file. It's a .fig file, and you can import that directly into your a Figma account. So go ahead and do what I did, basically design your own calculator app, but uh, feel free to experiment with different colors, different typefaces, different uh, icons, different layouts. Just let your 
imagination run wild. We would love to see what you create. So after you complete your design, uh, go ahead and send it to us. And the way you do that is very easy. You're going to be using Figma community. It's a, it's a great place to share a Figma file with other people. It's completely free. And here's how you do that. First of all, make sure you're logged into Figma either uh, via the app or with a browser like I am here. So what I did was I grabbed the starter kit and let's assume that I made, you know, my uh, my design changes here and now I want to share it, right? To do that, I'm going to click on share, then hit publish, right? And here it says publish to the Figma community. So let's hit publish. Uh, we can upload a custom thumbnail if we want to. Uh, we can give it a name. Here, I guess we could call it calculator app. And then um, assignment from Adi or UI challenge or whatever it is that uh, you want to call it. And then uh, you can add a short description. And then this is the important part, okay? I need you to add two tags to this so we can find your file. And the first tag will be TAS plus, and the second tag will be Adi challenge one, okay? So make sure you add these two tags, TAS plus and Adi challenge one. This will allow us to easily find uh, this file for this UI challenge. And then you can hit publish. If you don't have a community profile created yet, uh, you can easily create one now, just like I'm going to do here. And Figma is going to ask for a unique handle. Uh, this is um, one of my alternate Figma accounts, and I'm just going to uh, add my handle here, hit save. And that's it. The file will soon be available for everyone in the community to duplicate, remix, and share. But more importantly, uh, it will be visible uh, for us and we'll be able to, um, to get it for this UI challenge. And if you want, you can click view page and that's going to open up the Figma community page with exactly uh, the file that you just created. So this is how you can uh, share the UI design challenge results with us by using Figma community. So please send us your submissions. We'd love to see what you come up with. And with that said, uh, let us know if you enjoyed this course. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. As always, don't forget to check out the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel for more content like this, but also uh, to learn about web design, web development, and much more. It's all free, so make sure to also hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you for watching. I'm Adi, and until next time, take care.